Hi, my name is Gabrielle Marsden and I'm here to demonstrate my Gopas Nitty Naughty. Are you a dyer who wants to have stripes in your socks and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money? Well, I have an idea. This is what I call the Gobbas Nitty Naughty, which is based on a basic Nitty Naughty, but with some extensions on it. Oh. So I'm going to sh show how it works and uh, about how to load it up. What you need are a bunch of, um, you need four-way, one-inch PVC pipes. You need like uh, 10 feet of PVC pipe and you need to cut it down to little segments. The central for mine is 16 inches like the standard one. Okay, like if it was just a four branch, that has a circumference, it produces a skein with a circumference of um, six feet. By adding, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll go into the specifics, but basically you need to cut down the pipe to four inch ones for these arms. You need to get some caps and you need to have a little guy to go in here. So this guy is a little bit more than an inch. Yeah, so you just kind of should have pre-assembled this. Well, basically you stick that in there and that in there and the cap on top of it. All right, I'm not going to do all that. Um, so like this is, this is the, uh, this is an extension bar and this is the top bar. But, um, okay, so you got, you still getting this? Mm-hmm. All right. So, you need to do some math and decide how big your skein you want. And about 30 inches is a row. So, I'm going to have a table below that kind of gives you an idea of what to estimate so you can figure out how big you want to make yours. I'm, I'm making this one pretty big. Uh, let's see. I forget how much it is. It's supposed to be like uh, 18 yards or something, which is a whole bunch of rows. Okay, so the thing is, how do you wind it on here? That is complicated. So what you do is, let's see, we're going to do it like DNA. DNA has a twist. And that's what I'm doing here. Give everybody a little twist until it kind of, um, can you see that? Mm -hmm. It goes around 180 degrees from here to here. And uh, now I need to do the same to the bottom in the same direction. Oops. Look at this. The more branches you have, the less twist you need. And you know, this is, oh. <laughs> there's no glue in here. And the next thing is that I line up this guy with this guy, okay? So, I'll give it a little more, whoops, like that. Okay, and you're wondering, all right, <laughs> how is this working? Well, let me show you. <laughs> Got my little skein there. Let's start. Hopefully you can see this. Kind of wrap this around a few times. So it stays put kind of. Um, I do like this. Hopefully my skein is not going to get blinking on me. See how I'm zigzagging it? Um, if you notice, the length of each wrap averages. Okay, so now I'm at the bottom of the steps. So I have to jump all the way up to the top, and then I go down. The length of each wrap Is, is kind of like here from from this guy to this guy. So it's like the top two, okay? And uh, 
first round you have to be careful and then you kind of bring your arm around and now I'm all the way through one so I go on and I continue on this is not the quickest way to do this but you can do it by yourself as long as you have a um, some kind of a swift there. You have to be careful to make sure it's it's zigzagging. But unlike uh, what a friend of mine suggested, you don't really bring yourself in the head. I'm almost done winding this gang. I just wanted to show, I think it's more apparent what I'm doing here. So it's like you go down the steps and then you have to jump all the way up to the top. And you have to move your hand in the middle. And just continue one step at a time. Now there, uh, there's something called a warping board, or wait, I don't know if that's the correct terminology, for weavers, which is basically what this is, but it's kind of um, curved onto itself. Anyway, this is just about wrapped up, and uh, when I'm done with this, I'm going to show, first of all, that you need to tie off, you need to choke it at regular intervals so it doesn't turn into yarn barf. And then you need to mark off your stripes at regular intervals. And the other thing that I should note about this is that, as far as the way I'm winding this, is that I'm left-handed. It might be easier for people to use the other hand to kind of do the mirror image of this. Uh, this, this just works well for me. It might work well for you to do it this way too. Right I don't know. at the end. Right. That in there. Oops. Now I'm going to choke it. I'm going to try to cut a few lengths. I probably should have done this ahead of time, but oh, what the hell. Um, I'm going to need a bunch. Hopefully that'll be long enough. We'll see. So I'll start where the yarn ends right here. Now for a skein this thin, you you might not necessarily need to do the figure eight, but I guess if you want to be safe that's what you do. So what the hell, I'll do that. You know. But anyway, just kind of for this thing, each length here is about 30 inches. So I'm going to need to tie a lot of these. Because this is, um, wait, how many? How many we got? 24 times 30? You can speak, Todd. Um, yes. Okay. I'm going to have like 24 of these chokes, maybe a little bit less. I'll probably um, jump it up a little bit. I don't know. I think you're better off tying more than you need. I guess I'm making my intervals about a yard each. I've got them tied off at regular intervals to keep it from getting tangled. And I wasn't really careful about, you know, 
doing a good choke. In this case, I have to do a good choke. I'm going to make this six stripe colors. To tie off the chokes for the stripes, I would say do the figure eight because you really, really, really want it to keep its spot. So here we go. You know how to do that. There's the figure eight. Blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming you're probably a dyer. Um, okay, this actually divides it in half. So I'm going to have one here, one here. That's half. Now I need to divide the half into thirds. So I can just go down one, two. That's one third of the half, which is a sixth. Figure eight here. And one, two. And as you can see, it's a darker color. Now, when you take this off of here, <laughs> you're going to need to be careful. All right, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. One, two. And one, two. And I forget uh, how many rows of sock we'll get for this one. It's more than three. I know that with this interval. Oh, okay. You know what it is? It's four rows. Because um, the interval here is like 30 inches per thing. So it's like one, two, three, four. So that's four rows of stripe. Okay, and that's it. And now we take it off. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is just kind of do like this, okay? Just kind of gingerly. And I have found that after I dye it, it seems to work best if I... Um, I know this is kind of my dirty garden here, but this is this is the way I do things. I figure everything gets washed after it's dyed. Is this, does this look like chaos or what? Oh, it is. But uh, there's a method to this madness. Okay. So basically, in doing this batch, I'm kind of grabbing it in 12 places. So when you dye this, is, this is very tricky. Um, all right. So here it is in hand. Shake that stuff out. I need to soak it. And, uh, shouldn't get too tangled. Again, you can true it up. Um, if you're doing long intervals, it'd probably be easier to have a second person to hold the other ends. One person can hold this, the chokes, and the other person can stretch out the other part and make sure everything's all even. But Todd, you're not going to be too picky for these socks, are you? No. You don't care if the stripes are a little different. Okay, we're not going to worry about that. Um, but let's see. As far as storing the knitting naughty, naughty you just take it apart. One. It actually is really compact. And um, you can switch the central thing if you want to make your um, interval specific. Again, you need to do a lot of math, which can be annoying. But, you know, like this, I put it in the same bag as this lovely Hornshaw Swift. I love this. This is gorgeous. I mean, this is not gorgeous. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? You got any questions for me, Todd? Nope. All right. Well, um, anyway, this is kind of a, a brief description of it, kind of showing how it works, and uh, hopefully it'll make sense and so people will use it. So I think it's pretty cool.